Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are here to talk Vanderpump Rules Reunion Part 2, and we're also going to be talking about the valley, the valley which is wrapping up it's in yeah. the process of wrapping up mm-hmm. and um so we're gonna we're gonna recap both of those in one podcast episode yeah although we'll be splitting them up on youtube yeah so if you're watching on youtube you're not getting the valley in this video it's gonna be the next one but it's coming don't worry about it we yeah. got you yeah now before we get into all of this we have to remind you please hide your wife and hide your kids we are a politically in correct podcast we say a lot of bad words we have dumb opinions but we have a lot of fun yeah however if you're a sensitive elf, you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby but if you're ready to party welcome to this one yeah and if you are ready to party be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe we're reacting to milf manor over there y'all yes we are and that is a wild <laughs> it's pretty crazy um if you are watching on youtube please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us in the algorithm and so thank you in advance Now, Beatrice, you were just telling me we got a comment from somebody who said they were afraid of our podcast because we always open by saying that we're politically incorrect and they thought we were going to be neo-Nazis and say (laughs) a bunch of racist stuff like that. That's not what we mean. No. We just mean like we might have opinions that we are unlikely to censor that not everybody will agree with but yeah. we are good people over here we are we are wonderful people over here and we just try to have fun honey talking about reality television we never ever Mm-mm. talk politics no fuck that shit no we don't like to talk about it Mm-mm. and so we're never gonna do that and nope. that's great like we need a space on the internet where somebody's not screaming about politics Seriously. can i get an amen amen thank you <laughs> Um, so Vanderpump Rules, you said we had somebody write in with a comment that you wanted to share. Yeah, this is actually one of my friends, uh, my online friend. Oh, okay. And she is a huge Bravo person. She loves this shit. And she said, this is her hot take about Lala. Okay. She says, Lala was a fucking grifter from the beginning and was attempting to sleep with successful and powerful men so she would never have to work. Not only that, but she fucking failed in her sugar baby mission and is now tethered to and in a custody battle with a casting couch creep and decided to be a single mother deliberately. Now her main paycheck, VPR, is in serious danger and she's somehow making that Ariana's problem because Ariana never had to fuck producers to get success and jobs and opportunities because she was well received by the crowd lala was also a production puppet all season because she knew like everyone else did that the show was in danger and thought tearing ariana down would make for a good storyline she also wanted me to add that she's a single mom herself so she's not harping on lala for being a single mom she's just like why would you deliberately choose to be one that's a really interesting take and i can kind of see that i mean i think that up until This season, Lala has always had the luxury to have like really authentic reactions to things. But this season, I feel like I can smell the desperation on her. Like she Mm -hmm. knows like if she doesn't pull something out, if she doesn't make this cast work the way she thinks they need to work, then they're going to lose their job. And what does she have? She has her Amazon Live stuff. I I mean, which is like, what is that? I don't know what maybe it's popular. I have no idea. I know she has a podcast, but it's just a podcast. Right. Where she's constantly getting yes queened. Of course. Like nobody challenges her on anything. Yeah. And what I thought was really interesting in this reunion is that she was going back and forth with Katie Mm -hmm. about Katie saying, like, I will come for your job if you come for mine. And she's bringing her child into it as if she's janet on the valley right and their pregnancy and their children are the most important thing about them distinguishing them from the shit that they do right like her hypocrisy yes her hypocrisy throughout both parts of the reunion has been on full display oh yeah and it's really embarrassing to watch because like i'm not a vpr ho okay like i haven't seen all of the earlier seasons i don't know all of the lore except for what you tell me and what i see online 
But this season, I came into the beginning like, oh, I like Lala. She's very pretty. I like that she's kind of crazy, says what she thinks. I admire that energy sometimes. But then after this reunion, I'm like, girl, you are digging yourself a grave. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? You're ruining your job. You're ruining your reputation. And now what are you going to do? You're going to be broke and you're going to be a single mom. Like, have fun. And nobody likes you. Mm -hmm. And the gag is like you're blaming Katie for ruining your job or trying to come for your job. But you're doing that yourself because you are so unlikable that nobody's going to want to listen to your podcast. Yep. No one's going to want to buy your send it to Daryl sweatshirts or your water. And (laughs) nobody's going to want to support you. Yeah. And that's not something Katie did. Mm -mm. That's something you did. Yep. Yeah, she got on my nerves. Yeah, she really pissed me off, especially with the whole boundaries thing with Ariana. That was like, girl, you're so toxic. Can we can we talk about that? Yes. Okay, so that conversation in which it sounded like Andy was trying to call Lala out for her hypocrisy because in the previous seasons, she told everybody, like, if you're hanging out with Randall Emmett, then you're no friend to me. But then she wouldn't respect Ariana's boundaries in that regard. And her whole argument was, well, the biggest difference is I had a kid with this man. Yeah, that's it. And (laughs) I'm just wondering how that factors in at all. Like, why does that change it? It, and that's what doesn't make any sense to me because Ariana is straight up telling Lala, like, you don't have to understand it. It's still my boundary, though. And you still, as my friend, should be respecting that as a good person. But you're not. You're stomping over it. And Lala's like, well, I just don't understand because it's totally different. I understand that Lala's situation is a little different in terms of like the custody battle and that stuff can be used in court, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, just because your situation is different doesn't mean that you get to blatantly disrespect your friend's boundaries and shit on her for even having boundaries in the first place. Like that was just so frustrating and so toxic to me. After she respected your boundaries. Seriously. After she supported you in the ways that you articulated that you needed her to, she did it. Right. There is no difference. It doesn't matter um, that you're married or not. It doesn't matter whether you have a child or not. You had a breakup from this person and you asked everybody to adhere to your rules Ariana didn't think twice she's like no problem I'll do it and then you turn around and you don't have the same respect for her that's the problem it's not anything about your kid no it doesn't have anything to do with Ariana still living in the house and so it doesn't make sense to you it doesn't matter right this is what she's saying she needs from you as a friend and you can't give it to her exactly and on the after show I was watching it Ariana was trying to clarify like her position she's like I've never said that I that people can't be friends with Sandoval I just said I won't be friends with you if you are friends with him because I don't want my name or anything I say to get to him and vice versa. Like, I'm just not going to do that. And I thought that that was like a fair point. But all of these girls like Lala and Sheena are turning it around and being like, no, you're saying we can't be friends with him. No, she's just saying I'm not going to be friends with somebody who's friends with my ex, who's a cheating narcissistic asshole who ruined my life. Right. But that does put pressure on them, right, to conform to what she wants them to do. Well, I mean, we, and we went through the montage, right, I last guess, week yeah. of her actually saying that she's not going to be down with and or hang out with anybody who's hanging out with Tom Sandoval. But I still respect that. I, that's what and I'm saying. And you're going to have to make a choice at some point. Like, who are you going to ride for? If it comes down to this, who are you going to ride for? Right. But Lala just wants to be a production plant. Yep. She just wants to make TV because she's desperate for her job. She just wants to attack Katie, who who is the realist yep. on this entire cast because Katie isn't saying the things she wants Katie to say so that they can make good television. Right. I lost, I've just lost so much respect for Lala. I didn't Me have a too. lot, honey, but I lost it all for her. Me too. She was so freaking frustrating. And I just, I don't know. I I was frustrated with how she Lala's coming off as like, she's the realest person here. I'm so honest. I'm a truth teller. I lived my authentic life on all 11 seasons of VPR. And I'm like, girl, no, you didn't. Not at all. You hid <laughs> so much and you lied. We see Katie calling you out for dating a married man and you're lying about it. Right. You wouldn't let anybody talk about Randall. You wouldn't let anybody challenge your relationship with Randall. You shut that shit down immediately. Yeah. So no, you're not this big truth teller. No. And even when she's calling Katie out, quote unquote, for venting to her about Ariana and her frustrations with something about her, like she looked so stupid in this episode, Lala did, because even Andy's like, okay, she Katie's just venting to a friend about what's going on with her other friend. She's not talking shit to Ariana because 
Ariana's got a lot she's dealing with. Her life's just been turned upside down because of Sandoval. Like, maybe chill out. You look like a bad friend, Lala. You look like a fake ass, ho ass bitch Mm -hmm. to everybody, including Katie, Ariana, everyone. Right. And later in this episode, she's getting into it with Ariana, which we'll talk about. But like, it's the first time she's trying to moderate her vocal tones. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time she's not actually screaming because I think she's coming up against the one power position person in this group. I think Ariana has the power to crash Mm. this group personally. Yeah. And so she's not screaming at her, but it's the only time she's not screaming. She's been screaming this entire time throughout part one and now into part two. Yep. I'm just like, oh, I can't. No, how, how are we? And she's, talking over people like I just did to you. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> but she's interjecting herself and her yeah. opinions into absolutely everything. I know. Shut up. She's you're like not Brock. that important. I know, for real. You're not that important <laughs> to the real. conversation, especially when what you're bringing to the conversation is produced. Yep, 100%. And I'm kind of excited for the last reunion because it's going to be over and we're going to be done with this. But also, <laughs> but also because... They're going to show the last like 15 minutes of the episode, which Ariana hasn't seen. And nobody has seen the last 15 minutes of the footage. Some of the people that lived it, like Lala, when she was calling Ariana out for having a God complex. I'm like, oh, that's going to be messy. And this is why it's alleged now that everybody thinks Ariana and Lala are not friends anymore. It seems like it on the after show. They're kind of talking about how they just don't really talk to anybody anymore and everybody's removed Vanderpump rules from their Instagram bio, Which is interesting. Yikes. Now, I don't think everybody had Vanderpump rules on their bios, but some did. Mm-hmm. And now none of them do, which I found fascinating. But yeah, that conversation came up when they were talking about Schwartz telling Ariana before they went to Tahoe, like, you're not the queen of the group. Don't tell mm-hmm. everybody else how to feel and what to say. And then Ariana says something like, well, Schwartz is the only person who seems to have that opinion. So like, whatever. Yikes. And then they pan across the crowd because everybody knows what was said in the season finale, even though they haven't watched it. And Ariana hasn't watched anything. So Lala, where's your chest now? Say it with your whole chest. If you think Ariana has this big ego, then why aren't you saying it in this moment, right? Like she really thought she did something this season, Lala, huh? She Mm -hmm. thought she was doing some great TV, some drama about my girl. You just ruined all your friendships. You ruined your reputation because now the world fucking hates you and thinks you're a hypocrite because you are. And it's just like crazy to see. Mm -hmm. What did you think about um, Katie and Schwartz and Joe and all of that? So Joe is such an agent of chaos. Mm. I think she's not doing it intentionally. I think it's a byproduct of her innate personality, the way she talks over people, the way she Mm. turns to Sheena constantly and asks like, what does she mean? What does she say? Oh my God, like she's having all these weird side conversations. She's constantly gesticulating. She's just a weird girl. And I think that's what Katie's like referring to when she says crackhead energy and like I can kind of see it yeah my whole feeling about this was first of all Katie's a queen totally and she really never apologized no she didn't and she broke down why she felt like she felt and I think that was entirely valid now at the same time I think Joe has every right to have felt somewhat bullied and to have felt somewhat picked upon but at the same time you're fucking a woman's husband right like right after they break up and so if you get some smoke for that you entirely deserve it my takeaway with joe was that she came on this reunion to make herself a victim Mm. and i didn't believe her crocodile tears i don't believe she was really that sad about katie like when you see her on all of her instagram lives currently yeah like running currently now she's popping off she's talking mad shit she's emotionally unregulated yeah i was much more interested in the tom schwartz is a fuck boy conversation we got into that a little bit but it's wild to me how tom schwartz can't take even a smidge of criticism i know regarding his conduct and how he treats women how he treats people and how he's treated katie and joe like he couldn't hear anything and even james is like what are you talking about you absolutely did this and lala's telling him you absolutely did this you're gaslighting. You're in front of all of us. You're gaslighting Joe. Oh, yeah. You can't see it. 
No, he can't see it at all. And there was also a point where Sheena said that he was a shitty husband. He's like, no, I wasn't. I wasn't a shitty husband to Katie. And it's like, oh my God, like talk about denial. Like mm-hmm. no wonder you're dating some 20 something year old chick who's got, who doesn't have a brain that's fully right. developed because they can <laughs> otherwise she'd be able to see how toxic and crazy you are to like just be so unaware of how shitty you are. But then on the after show, he's sitting there with Tom Sandoval being like, yeah, I know I wasn't the best to Katie and I'm sorry for that. And like, we're never going to get back together. It is what it is. I've moved on. It's like, oh, shut It is lip service. Up. He is saying, things he thinks the audience wants to hear when you watch him on the reunion you can see he likes to needle her he likes to nag her he's just an absolute asshole yep and And he takes no responsibility for joe oh none at all and i loved how everyone in the group was calling him out for that like nobody had anything good to say about how Mm -hmm. he handled joe and i love that katie even straight up said like i have empathy for you joe because i feel bad that you've been strung along by my shitty ex-husband who does not give a shit about you at all all he wants to do is fuck right just like the people on seeking sister wife he just wants to fuck (laughs) right right that's it so i thought that was cool that katie at least acknowledged that yeah but at the same time she wasn't like cowed by all the people who said you shouldn't be talking to her like that you shouldn't Mm -hmm. be treating other people like that I said that personally like Mm -hmm. I felt like when Joe came out for that one event by the pool and all the girls got together and made her feel bad and Sheena took her hat I'm like where are we in high school like don't treat other people like that if you have something to say you should say that but Katie is owning her shit she is taking responsibility for the things that she did and trying to explain herself. But the thing is, Joe just came into this reunion to make Katie look bad. I know. She's not really there to have a conversation because, frankly, she does not know how to yeah. listen to anybody, mm-hmm. much less speak with intention or slow the fuck down so everybody can understand her. She just came there to cry her big, dumb tears and make Katie feel bad. But guess what? She don't feel bad. No, she doesn't. And don't she's standing ten toes down, honey. Mm-hmm. That was what was so weird to me because joe kind of puts on this air like she's this this small town girl she's just like a weird quirky person in la with all these vapid people but it's like girl like i don't know what you expected katie to feel when you moved in with schwartz for a few days like you say and you were couch surfing in his house like shut up and then you guys get drunk and have Mm -hmm. been fucking for a whole entire year and katie even brings up like we had an agreement when we divorced that he wouldn't be screwing people in the friend group i wouldn't be and then you go and do it two or three weeks after we Mm -hmm. separate so yeah of course i'm gonna be mad so i totally see what katie's how katie comes from i understand she's a hard person and she can come off very mean i'm kind of like that too especially when i'm hurting and i'm mad i can be a bit of a bitch really so i get oh totally. i've never seen that in you at all no because no. i try not to because i know it can be destructive I'm, I'm your elder well yeah and i'm your mom-in-law exactly and you're always so sweet but i hear what you're saying yeah and katie even said something like yeah i don't have to like everybody yeah exactly you know i, I don't have to respect all people i right. choose very deliberately who i want in my circle and joe you ain't it honey no honey no she wants to be, though. Very, Joe. very, very much. Talk about a grifter. So let's talk a little bit about Sheena. Mm. When Sheena was talking about not getting the memo that Ariana was going to be on Dancing with the Stars, <laughs> whereas like Dan, her boyfriend, Ariana's boyfriend, got the memo. And I guess Logan. Because they're screwing. And, and who's Logan? I mean, Logan is, I think, Ariana's best friend. Oh, OK. Like so. But. Sheena was confounded and confused as to why she didn't get that memo. And then, of course, she happened to overhear that Ariana also was going to be in Chicago and Ariana hadn't told her directly. And so she was talking a little bit about that and she was smiling and she seemed to try to say that she didn't really have a problem with it and she understood but I feel like she's butthurt about that. Oh, 1,000%. Yeah. And it's really kind of embarrassing to me and very cringe that we're even still talking about this on the reunion. Yeah. I understand it was kind of like a a plot point throughout the season and stuff. But like if Sheena wanted to look good, all she'd have to say is, yeah, I was a little butthurt, but like I'm cool. I'm over it now. I wish her the best. Like that's so awesome. I'm so glad that you were on it. But like... She's still like, oh, I just wish I would have known. I wish she would have told me. And then on the after show, she's also talking about it. Sandoval and everyone's like, yeah, Sheena should get her cho- chance at Dancing with the Stars. I'm like, oh my God. 
not. Well, this I mean, is so cringe. on the reunion, Shana says, "Well, I'm very busy this year because yeah, okay. I'm making music with sure. the 27s or whatever their dumb name is." And so it's not like I could actually do it because I'm booked and busy and blessed. Uh huh. But maybe next year. Like yeah. you're desperate. You're so desperate. And when we get into the conversation about how every single man in the group has hit on Shana at I one know. point or another, because that was brought up. Uh, as a result of Katie mm-hmm. never being told that Tom actually tried to kiss Sheena. Like Sheena's just trying to say, well, I can't tell you anything. I'm just, I want you to be happy. And I don't want you to think I'm a home wrecker. I didn't want to spoil your relationship with Tom Schwartz. I don't know what Sheena was giving in this reunion, but it was weak. It was desperate. And she's not a good friend. Nope. She is so anxiously attached to everyone and everything in her life like she doesn't know how to be solid in a friendship whether that's to katie whether that's to ariana whether that's in her own relationship she just wants accolades she wants to be the first to know she wants to be invited to everything but she doesn't know how to show up for people in a solid way in my opinion no i agree 100 percent. and on the um after show she was straight up being like yeah you know the one thing that really pisses me off like especially in the context with her having a friendship with sandoval i guess she had like an after party with him or something after the finale or after the reunion or something and ariana found out about it because she sheena went up to his room or something oh my gosh okay i didn't i didn't watch this week only i know okay i only watched it right before i came so that's the only reason why it's fresh (laughs) on my mind but um Sheena was talking about this and she's like, you know, the thing that bothers me all season is that Ariana forgets that I have pure intentions. And I'm like, girl, on the reunion with all this stuff, with the dancing with the stars and Sandoval and the friendship and everything, I'm like, you're kind of a snake. Like, I wouldn't trust you, especially if you're trying to act like you're my friend and like you care about me, but then you're fucking jealous and you're talking to my ex-boyfriend after I freaking told you it made me uncomfortable. Like, I don't know. I think Sheena's shady. I don't trust her. I think that's how narcissists act. This is something narcissists do when you call them on their shit. They say something like, well, but you know my heart. Yeah. You know who it is that I am. I'm like, actually, I know your actions. Right. And I see what you're doing. And it doesn't reconcile with who you say that you are. Mm. And that's what I think Sheena is doing in all of these situations. Totally makes sense. Because that's Mm -hmm. what Sandoval does, too. Yeah. And I can't wait to see him cry on the next uh, reunion. Him with his fake tears trying to apologize to Ariana. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) His fucking visine tears. She doesn't want any of it. So obviously that preview when he's talking to Ariana, this is right after they watch the final six minutes and she sees everything that Tom says and she's going to see what Lala said and also how Sheena in that moment also said something like, no, I totally agree with you, Lala. Yes. She does have a God complex. So she's going to see all of that and I, I cannot wait. Me neither oh and then we also have to talk about james and Allie. yes yes first of all Allie looked gorgeous you know who she looks like what i mean you'd have to be an old head like me to remember the movie love story oh, with ali was... mcgraw mm. ali mcgraw had like this long dark brown hair and she has kind of a similar bone structure to ali mcgraw but she's stunning in so this beautiful. emerald green dress Love. lord classically yes beautiful yes anyway that's my thought about Allie, but go on i really like Allie. i think she's really great i think she's been great all season i like how they were kind of talking about james's sobriety so i guess he's been sober for a year mm-hmm. and he's like well you said you didn't want to be sober for the relationship or you didn't want to you know, become sober for that. But it seems like you are because they're talking about how Allie left. She Mm -hmm. straight up left for a couple nights. Was it two or four? I forget. I don't care. She left. She packed up the kit, the cats and everything. She says she doesn't like James drinking. So he's sober. But I I thought that was kind of interesting. And I was just looking at her body language. And of course, I have said all season long that I I'm very dubious about James because of the multiple allegations of domestic violence. Rachel is making those allegations, although they're very veiled. But Kristen has come right out and said, he fucking hit me for sure. Yeah. And so, like, I'm always side-eyeing James. And I think he did those things when he was drinking. So I'm wondering if anything like that happened with Allie. Mm. Like, he was drinking. Maybe he was exhibiting chaotic behavior. Or, like, did he actually do something? I certainly... Hope not, because she does seem to have a really good head on her shoulders. Yeah. I can't imagine that she would let some, not let, but I mean, take some sort of abuse like that mm-hmm. and then not leave. Right. But I'm just not sure. I'm always, where it, when it comes to James, I'm just 
always concerned about always that. skeptical yeah. yeah and i mean that's fair and i wonder honestly for me my vibe vibe check is that ali probably left because he was saying some really effed up shit when he was drunk one night and she's like you know what i'm done mm-hmm. you're an asshole every time you drink peace out get your shit together and then maybe i'll come back and then he decided okay i'll get my shit together because you're like the best thing that's happened to me so i think it's really dangerous for somebody who has an addiction and or is an alcoholic to give up their vice for someone else totally or to stay in a relationship like you have to kind of do what lala did although actually lala gave up booze for randall Randall, randall yeah randall told her like if you don't stop drinking like we're done because Mm. she was so chaotic Mm. but if you're giving up booze or or your vice for somebody else then you really run the risk like if there's a a problem in the relationship or if you like hit a part of the relationships that's very difficult if you have a disagreement like are you just gonna go right back to it and blow up your life like oh sketchy i know i worry about it scary and i mean at least james took a little bit of accountability for his behavior like he says something like you know i know that i'm super disrespectful and crazy and i say some really messed up things when i'm drinking so i just know it's better for me to stop but i'm like okay but you're still a dj though and you dj at all these clubs where everybody's getting drunk or high on mdma or well, whatever but he's california sober so he does do a lot of weed weed right. sure but i mean ooh, there's two different yeah. things right there in right. my opinion so I don't know. I worry about them, but I feel like Allie's really good for him. And I hope that he can continue to be a good man for her because she deserves that. I am dubious. Yeah. I don't blame you. Right. But I don't blame th- you. Is this when they kind of also got into the conversation about Ariana and Tom and the pets? Because James also piped in with that. Yeah, that was like right at the end, because I think Andy brings it up. He's like, what is the custody with your guys's animals? And Ariana's like, well, I've had Kitty for like 15 years, so she's mine. I'm not giving her to Sandoval. And I purchased Maya, and that's all in my name. So she's also mine. And Sandoval rolls his eyes. He doesn't say anything. He just rolls his eyes. And then James is just like, oh, fuck off. Eat a dick. (laughs) Like, he's like super mad at him immediately. (laughs) Right. Which I just loved. And it was like right at the very end of Mm -hmm. this boring reunion. But James is calling him out because Sandoval understood the situation kind of with Rachel and Graham and all of this stuff. Like, it was on the side of Rachel taking her. Right, because when Rachel and... Uh, James broke up Rachel decided to take Graham even though James had such a heartfelt yeah. deep and meaningful bond with that dog she took him anyway ended up giving him to the pound or whatever and Sandoval stood with Rachel in that situation but now that the situation is being applied to him he has a problem with Ariana just taking Maya because that's Ariana's dog so like shut the fuck up Sandoval once again you're being a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. But then Sandoval gets all defensive in true Sandoval fashion. Yeah, and brings up that he has heard some things about James mm-hmm. and... And Hippie, I think. And Graham. And, and Graham? Yeah, I think he said something he heard about oh, things that James okay. was doing with the dog or whatever. Or like he had heard some shit from Rachel that he hasn't said but it's like you're saying shit you're right. going to say stuff right oh i was in i was interpreting that as him saying i've heard like you're cheating or i heard like oh. you're doing other things but i think actually you're right he's probably talking about the shit that rachel talked when she was with tom sandoval because yeah. rachel did say on her podcast which i somebody addressed i think it was andy that um James was not great with Graham when Graham was a puppy and that the reason Graham has all of these behavioral issues is because of how James treated him. Yes. Which is disturbing Mm -hmm. because, I mean, if you're also putting your hands on people and you're violent when you're drunk, like, I I mean, I can see a world where that could happen. I don't want that to be true, but Tom is probably insinuating that. Yeah. And I think that's honestly probably bullshit on Rachel's part and Tom's part. Because, I mean, Lisa Vanderpump pipes in. It's like the only time she's talked Mm -hmm. in all these reunions. She's like just a prop there. But she pipes in and she's like, no, when I got Graham back, like the way that James reacted and they show the clip of him crying, like he loves that dog. Like, so I think it's all just a bunch of like talking crap. Like Rachel's trying to take the heat off of her. Right. Which I get, but also girl, you made your bed. Yeah. Like, you did this. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. And same thing with Sandoval trying to push it off and act like James is like this piece of shit, which he might be. 
Okay, like there's a lot of allegations against him. He might be a piece of shit, but it's like it's all just deflection. Right. And that's what's so annoying. Right. And that's why James calls him out and says, eat a dick, Tom, because right. come on, <laughs> like you do this all the time. Which like ho- however you feel about James, I just love when he goes for Tom. <sighs> so I just good. love when he goes in. It is a thing of beauty. It's so great. I, I just admire that. It's the Sagittarius in him. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else like that was interesting? That was in pretty this? much it. Yeah, it was kind of boring. Yeah, kind of. And we're heading into the big conflict in part three and i can't wait to get to it me too i want to see some tears yeah i want to see some screaming not from lala though like some actual fighting or some like getting into the drama of it all and having like a real discussion around it all right let's now get into the valley and if you're watching on youtube it is a different video we usually release it within an hour so it's coming honey don't worry about it and you're gonna want to watch though because that was i thought that 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 was was lit all right let's get into it (laughs) 